Is there something in common in every culture that creates this need for God? Well, I think uh, anyone who has an experience of mystery at all knows that there is a, a dimension, let's say, uh, of the universe that is not that which is available to his senses. There's a wonderful saying in one of the Upanishads, uh, when uh, for a sunset or a mountain and the beauty of this or of that, you pause and say, ah, that is participation in divinity. And I think that's what it is. It's the realization of wonder. And also the experience of tremendous power, which people, of course, living in the world of nature are experiencing all the time. You know, there's something there that's much bigger than the human dimension. And our way of thinking in the West largely is that God is the source of the energy. The way in most oriental thinking, and I think in most what we call primitive thinking also is, that God is a manifestation of the energy, not its source. The God is the vehicle of the energy. And uh, the level of energy that is involved or represented determines the character of the God. There are gods of violence. There are gods of compassion. There are gods that unite the two. There are gods that are the protectors of kings in their war campaigns. These are uh, personifications of the energy that's in play and what the source of the energy is. What's the source of the energy of these lights around us? I mean, this is a total mystery. Doesn't this make of faith and anarchy a sort of continuing war among principalities? As life is, yes. I mean, even in your mind, when, when it comes to do anything, there will be a war, a, a decision as to priorities, what you're to do now. Or in, in relationship to other people, there will be four or five possibilities of my way of action. And the notion of divinity or divine life in my mind would be what would determine my decision. And if it were rather crude, it would be a rather crude decision. But is divinity just what we think? Yes. What does that do to faith? Well, it's a tough one about faith. You are a man of faith. I'm you're, not, a, you're a man of wonder. And, yeah, I'm, I, uh, I don't have to have faith. I have experience. What kind of experience? Well, I have experience of the wonder of the life. I have experience of love. I have experience of hatred and malice. I like to punch the guy's jaw. Uh, and I admit this. But those are different divinities, I mean, from the point of view of, a, of a, a symbolic imaging. Those are different images operating in me. For instance, when I was a little boy and was being brought up a Roman Catholic, I was told I had a guardian angel on my right side and a tempting devil on my left. And uh, when it came to making a decision of what I would do, the decision would depend on which one had most influence on me. And I must say that in my boyhood, and I think also in the people who were teaching me, they actually concretized those thoughts. They did what? I, it was an angel. That angel is a fact, and the devil is a fact, you see? Otherwise, one thinks of them as metaphors for the energies that are afflicting and guiding you. And those energies come from? From your own life. The energy of your own body, the different organs in your body, including your head, are the conflict systems. And your life comes from where? Yeah, there you are. From the ultimate energy that's the life of the universe. And then you say, well, somebody has to generate that. Why do you have to say that? Why can't it be impersonal? That would be Brahman. That would be the transcendent mystery that you can also personify. 